A continued plea by the Association of People with Dwarfism to the government is what drives me to seek audience with them, allowing me to meet these gentlemen and lady who may be under five feet tall, but who have seen more than the average man or woman. They, however, are not asking for pity from the government, but exemption from paying taxes. Is it at all order to seek tax exemptions from the government? Well, according to these representatives from the Association of People with Dwarfism, they think no. In fact, they say it is not only a valid proposal by them, but also their legal right under the Constitution. It is from the Persons with Disabilities Act 2003 that they borrowed their argument. The Act stating that all persons with disabilities who are in receipt of an income may apply to the Minister responsible for finance for exemption from income tax and any other levies on such income. We are not joyriding here. We, it's our right. They, however, say it has not been as easy making that happen. Not only have the forms required to fill for the exemption remained scarce, the process is long and tedious. I filled in the forms at the National Council for Persons with Disability. I also filled in the forms and took to KRE. Uh, I was assessed. Uh, but uh, apart from that, I have never had. Uh, from anyone. Um, and I want to restart the process and see if something happens this time round. They are categorized as persons with disability in the constitution, referred to as persons of short stature. And though the law clearly states that discrimination by employers, for example, is prohibited, many here will tell you that that is not the case when they walk into offices seeking jobs. The group is quick to inform me that even though all of them are over 24 years of age, only one of them has a job despite their sterling qualifications. William Ndongo. Um, Evelyn, I got a job with the government only a year ago, yet I'm 31. Um, part of that reason, the unspoken reason, is uh, the way I look. When I appear for an interview, it's shock uh, at first. Uh, who is this that we're interviewing? And uh, that's not very really beautiful. It affects my self-esteem and all that. Uh, but I'm lucky now I have a job. William works as an instructional engineer at the Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology and boasts of a degree in teaching from Kenyatta University in 2006 and a master's in human resource management. Not enough to have gotten him a job sooner. 25-year-old Julie Waidera, on the other hand, has opted to return to school after months of tarmacking in search of a job. I do apply. I've been called for interview, but when you just appear to the panels, you are told to wait till they give you feedback, but they don't respond to you. So when I saw so maybe it, my diploma is not get, uh, making me feel to get job, I said, let me go back to school again. Now uh, I'm pursuing a degree at, at St. Paul's University. I'm pursuing a Bachelor, Bachelor of Business Administration. Joseph Wambugo opted to start a business after school, refusing to be pulled into the unforgiving job market and career world. You want to apply for a job, then after you present your paper somewhere, uh, the interviewer will just look, for, look at you like that and say, hey, Will you be able to reach here? Will you be able to do that? Then you find no answer for him because he's underrating you. He now owns a car wash in his hometown but says many dismiss him even though he has successfully turned his business into a lucrative one. I'm going to the matatu, I'm picking a matatu. You find a woman just come from nowhere and say, hey, Mtoto, start up. And then you feel as if that, that, that dis disrespected you. And then as uh, time goes, um, as the journey goes, I then sit on her uh, legs. Then I will tell her, hey, I'm not a kid, man. I'm a grown-up man. I, I, I did business management. Concerning about my case, logistics. 24-year-old Ahmed Mohammed says given the chance, he would rise to be a manager, having graduated with a diploma in business management. He, however, remains jobless, as with 24-year-old Joachim Mwangi, who has been forced to volunteer in several non-governmental organizations to keep busy and improve his portfolio. We have been discriminated wherever we go. Wherever we go, we normally people 
people normally see us as, as we are small persons. Some of them, they even, whenever we respond to them, they don't respond, uh, they don't respond to me something good. They show me some sort of ignorance due to my height. They just don't have that uh, confidence in you that you will take that job well and you'll do it perfectly like a tall man. They may have been forced by circumstances to be aware of the fact that discrimination is a reality they may have to live with. But if that is the price they have to pay, the government should be indebted to make their burden lighter as promised by the law. I may have lost a lot of years when I was not gainfully engaged and uh, maybe that would be one way of recouping what uh, I may have lost out there. So as a right first and secondly as a way of bringing me at par with the rest. It's, it's our time now stand up and fight for our own rights. Their plea is simple for a group that even registered to participate in the World Dwarf Championship Games in Michigan, United States just a few weeks ago, but failed to receive funding from the Ministry of Sports despite numerous promises. The government expedites the process of application of tax exemptions to allow them finally enjoy their right. Evelyn Wambui, Citizen, Live at Nine.